Shabbat Shalom and welcome to another edition of the East Northport Jewish Center Shabbat Supplementary Video Series. I'm your co-host, Chazan Stephen Waldick, along with Rabbi Ian Silverman. We're here to present you with some Torah and Tefillah, some study and some music with which to enhance your at-home Shabbat celebration. If you'd like to join us, either live or via Zoom, we have services Friday night at 6 p.m. and Saturday morning at 9.30 a.m. Please contact the office for more information about joining us one way or the other. We'll begin this week with an Or Chadash. You may have heard this one before. This is my own arrangement. So take it away, me. Hadash al Zion Tayyib, Vinis Kehulano Mera Leoro, or Hadash al Zion Beautiful Or Chadash Hazen. I am uh, very happy to be here with uh, Shabbat Et Hanan, Shabbos Nachamu today. And um, I wanted to give a, a little poem about the Sedra. Uh, the Sedra will be read at our services uh, uh, by Hazen in uh, Shabbos morning, this coming, and we hope that you'll be here. Vait uh, Hanan is really about Moses 
again, continuing his uh, rather long prologue about what happened in terms of those last 40 years. In the, in the course of this, uh, Moshe introduces a couple of interesting things, a whole review of what happened at the time of receiving the Ten Commandments, and another recitation of the Ten Commandments, actually with some variations, and also introducing the idea of uh, uh, Shema Yisrael Ve'ahavta, which you will find in this Parsha as well. With that in mind, a poem of the Parsha as a whole. Moses is still hopeful that God would consider letting him enter the land. After all, Moses was never a quitter. He had Orla, Leket, Peah, quite planned. But God told him enough already. Don't mention this subject again. Better you pass on the leadership, steady, and to Joshua your wisdom do lend. So Moses contented himself with fine speeches to give the Israelites their aplomb. He gave them the chutzpah to stand in the breaches and take all the enemies on. He reminded them of God who had taken them out, a people from the midst of another, to give them the Torah from a smoking mount that counseled that we love each other. Ten commandments were given to all, he recalled, and warnings against worshiping idols, and Moses the Shema Yisrael did install and counseled love of God unbridled. Armed with the Torah and armed with their Lord, Moses knows that they can't be defeated. Faith is greater than weapons of war. To a land of honey, they'll be treated. If there's anything Moses can impress before he has to leave them and die, it's to always the mitzvot caress. With them, they'll soar and they'll fly. So having the, read the little poem, a little of our Torah on what I spoke about in the poem a bit at the beginning, enough already, Ravlach. This is a poem about what those two little words, enough already, or you have much, something to that effect means, according to our tradition. At Shabbat Nachamu, we are told by the prophet to feel comforted. And yet Moses doesn't expect comfort at the beginning of this Parsha, where Moses tells the people they'll soon be going into the land and that the conquest has begun on this side and soon Joshua will lead them into the land of Canaan, he again visits the fact that he pleads with God to go into the land of Israel also just to see how great it is. You know, experience it a little bit, not just see it from the north, from the top of a mountain. He says to God, let me retire there a little bit in the Midrash. Well, I do some of the special mitzvot that have to do only with the mitzvot of Eretz Yisrael. So much of the Torah is involved with that. And God says to him, enough, Ravlach, stop talking to me about this matter again. Go instead to the top of the mountain and look out west and north and south and east. The rabbis comment on what this meaning of Ravlach, these two little words can mean. Rav can have something to do with a rabbi. It can have something to do with mastery. It can have something to do with a lot, like in the word harbeh. And we don't know exactly what it means in this context. So the rabbis tell us many different things. It can mean, don't worry, Ravlach, your role will be big. Things will be great for you when you bring this generation that dies in the desert in at the time of the Messianic era, at the time of resurrection, you'll be leading them in. You have much already or the Abarbanel commentary, Ravlach, you have experienced already a lot of the coming into the land of Israel with the inheriting of the two and a half tribes of uh, Menashe, of God and Reuven. Or Ravlach says the Baltarim, you, you have a rabbi, you have Eliezer HaKohen, where you can annul a vow, but I, God, I don't have such a rabbi to annul a vow, and I took one that you shouldn't get into the land when you struck the rock. Or Ravlach, you have won many arguments. You have been very good at reeve, at arguing. And you've won them from me already at the golden calf to forgive, at the episode of the spies in which you kept me from destroying Israel, in which I said they would wander for 40 years. 
at the time of the punishing of the snakes and how you were able to stop that, or at the time of surfite in which I almost killed the whole people. Gunag, you've won enough of the arguments. You won't win this one. Or Ravlach, don't worry about the Malachamavit. There is much harbeh, much stored up for you in the heavenly life. Or Ravlach, you're a great man, Moses, but Father Time is still primary. He is your Rav, he is your master, just as any mortal, even though you last to a strong and vigorous 120. In my understanding, Ravlach Moishala, you've accomplished so much in life. You have so much already. You discovered you were Jewish at a young age and you captured that and you began to do for your people. You saw yourself a, a bush that wasn't consumed and were called upon by God in the course of this to be able to be the liberator of the people of Israel. And you answered that call and liberated them. And you saw yourself embrace an incredible ascent from a stutterer to an orator. And you saw them in the wilderness and saw them through to the brink of their entry. And you received the Torah and you did so through a special prism that says, Aspeclaria Hamira, a clear prism by which you were able to have prophecy. And you're now 120, fully healthy, vigorous to the very end with all your faculties. You, Moshe, you, Moshe, Ravlach, you've got so much blessing already. How much can you ask? No human being gets to achieve every single dream, climb every single mountain. Be aware of how vast your portion, Ravlach. What I thought was ironic in researching this idea of that's enough already is that the infinite interpretations get to the point of enough already with enough already. But what do we learn from this? Ma nafkamina. What can we get out of this? I think we can learn that we must navigate two important pieces of wisdom. One is that one should never be complacent with their accomplishments. For some, you might think that their life One's life is filled and chock full of meaning and deed, but it's never filled to the, to the brim. More deeds await us, more contexts in which we feel great purpose and meaning are in the offing. Moshe, after all, wanted to experience more. He wanted to do more. He wanted to perform more mitzvot. Sometimes we think, I know enough already. I've learned enough already. Clearly we don't there is always something more to learn. The Mishnah tells us, because this is the reason why you were created in the first place, was to be continue to be a learning person. Each time we turn to the Parsha, we say to ourselves, what can I possibly learn from this? I've studied it 50 years. Every Shabbos I come around to it every year. And yet, we think to ourselves, that it's not going to jump out something, some new insight. And yet it does. A word, a phrase, a commentary cuts right to us. And we never noticed it before. Some think I've been to Israel once, that's enough. It's never enough. There's so much more that we can learn by going, but willing when the time comes to be able to travel again and see how Israel evolved and the next visit and so forth and so on. Sometimes we think, that I've prayed enough. But then in the midst of a prayer, we glimpse an insight, a fresh perspective, a new resolve. We find meaning in something said to us or meaning in something that we resolve to do. Without the continuing attempts, one doesn't find those moments, those glimpses. It's never enough. Sometimes we think, I've depleted myself. My pockets are empty. What more can I give? until we make that effort and find that extra energy to do acts of gimilul chesed or acts of tzedakah in which we think to ourselves uh, the great blessing that comes from it, that feel that great blessing since we are able and in a position to do so. It's never enough. So one is ravlach, a question. The other might be ravlach, a statement, a statement that you have so much you might not feel it now because you're focusing 
on what it is you don't have. But you have a heart that beats, a heart that feels, eyes that see, hands that give, legs that walk, a mind that thinks, people in your life that you love and that love you, a roof over your head, clothes on your back, and even a few in the closet. You have your honor, you have your expertise, you have your hobbies, and you have your life experiences, which are a history that only you have. Whatever your bank account might be, you have the essentials and then some. So Ravla, see the manifest blessing in your lives and be thankful to God for all of them. Ravla, may the vessel that is you be ever expansive of your awareness of blessings. You always have to be also focused on, as Moshe was, what more can I do? Together those two things will bring you in the end great honor and great comfort. And to that we say, Amen. And at this time I call upon my colleague, Chazen Walvik, to render some comments about Shabbos, about the Haftorah, Nachamu of the Prophet. Uh, and uh, I bid you adieu. Shabbat Shalom. Yeshkoach, Rabbi. Well done. Today is, of course, Shabbat Nachamu. We have finally made it over Tisha B'Av, and uh, now begins the seven-week process to get ready for the high holidays. But who's counting? Um, whew, that's uh, frightening to say that out loud. Um, in any case, we begin our first Haftarah of Consolation going back to Isaiah, who we just read last week with all the warnings and, and uh, uh, admonitions, if you will. But now as we reach sort of the, the end of the book of Isaiah, we have, we have a message of comfort. We have a message of reconciliation between God and the people of Israel. Nachamu, nachamu, ami yomar Eloheham. Comfort, comfort, O oh my people, says your God. And the, the, the message is, is all about how Israel and the, the, the Judean people in, in particular will be reunited with Jerusalem and reunited with, with the land. But there's something a little bit peculiar about it in that this is not exactly a prophecy. When these words were written, uh, uh, Cyrus the, the Mede had already conquered Babylon and had already pro proclaimed that the Jews could come back to the land. That the, the people were already heading back, so why do we need a message now when we already know that we can go back to the land? And I think that teaches us an important lesson. And what that is, is that it's not just enough to predict what's going to happen, but that, that Isaiah is saying that it's, it's not enough to have sort of the, 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 the political impetus of return and, and, and getting that, that sort of uh, permission from the king, but to say that God is with us as well. This is not just a secular endeavor, but in fact, centrally, it is a religious endeavor to rebuild the Jewish community in the land of Israel. And what we can learn from that is that as we continue that, that uh, rebuilding of community, that return, and as, as we've said earlier, we, we do have live services, poo poo poo, here in uh, East North Port Jewish Center, uh, and, and for those who are unable, we still offer Zoom uh, connective services, so you can participate that way as well, that it's not enough that the government gives us permission 
to come back. You know, uh, the, the Cuomo has, has made multiple guidelines on, on what is safe and what is not safe, etc. But that we have to take in the religious perspectives as well. Um, we need to, to focus on our Jewish values of pikuach nefesh, saving a life, as well as uh, uh, taking care of the poor, as, 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 as well as teaching our children. And as we reopen and in some cases have to close back down again and reopen and, and do hybrid things, and as it becomes much more complicated, it's important that whatever decisions we make, we make them within the framework of our Jewish identity. So towards that end, whatever decisions you do, uh, keep in mind that we here at the East Northport Jewish Center are a resource for you. Um, we'd love to get some feedback from you as to what you're feeling as well. So please leave comments in, the, in this video if you have any questions or suggestions. Uh, we will be taking a short hiatus for a few weeks as we begin the preparations for our high holidays, which as I said, is only seven weeks away. So those services will look very different than previous years, whether or not you are in the building, whether or not we are in the building, which we are currently planning on it. Um, but a lot of things that you are used to and we're expecting may be cut out. And what we will be doing is we'll be Pre preparing videos for you to access before or after the holiday that will contain uh, some of these tefillot, some of these songs, uh, some of the readings, some of the, the teachings that Rabbi would normally do uh, in a way to uh, enhance the, the shortened service that we will do that will be shortened for, for pikuach nafesh, again, for, for health reasons to, to make sure that we don't give the virus any more opportunity than it needs to spread between us. Um, so we'll be making those videos and maybe you'll see some of those before high holidays as we get them up and running, but we will not have weekly videos uh, for a few weeks. Um, so before we conclude, I'm going to share with you uh, an Adon Alum by uh, Cantor Max Helfman. Uh, he wrote this, 25 years before Star Wars came out in the movie theaters, and you might say, what should that have anything to do with that? But uh, I think if you'll listen, you might be surprised at uh, sort of the, the themes that, who knows, maybe inspired John Williams for, uh, to write his score. So with that, I wish you a Shabbat Shalom. Please like, subscribe, and uh, stay tuned for when we return. Shabbat Shalom. Adon Olam, Hashem Malach, Beterem Ko, Yitzir Nivra, Yit Nasa, Ehef Tzoko, Azai Melech, Shemo Nikra. Be'ah, Hare kiklot hakol eva adoyim lot nora vehu haya vehu hove vehu yihya b'ti fara vehu echad b'yem sheni leham shilo lehafira Billy Rashid, Billy Tuchlid, Billy Hawes, Billy Isra, Billy Eli, Billy Godi, Billy Tsar, Billy Sim, Manosli, Menakosi, Billy
Adonai live Elohira, Adonai live Elohira, Velo, 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 Ira. Okay, one more to say, thanks for watching this video. Please like and subscribe, hit the bell button, and get okay, one more time, one more time. Well, thanks for watching one last time. Hit the bell button again, and don't forget to give us a enormous thumbs up. And don't forget to be a Jewish and click to our album and become a camel rider. Camel rider. That's the name I called her.